The book of Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 48 today. This is our 32nd study in the book of Isaiah, and we come to chapter 48, verse 1. And Father, we ask that you would sanctify us by your truth. Your word is truth, in Jesus' name, amen. Isaiah 48, verse 1, hear this, O house of Jacob, who are called by the name of Israel, and have come forth from the wellsprings of Judah, who swear by the name of the Lord, and make mention of the God of Israel, but not in truth or in righteousness. God's people were making promises, swearing in the name of God, but they were not keeping their promises. Verse 2, for they call themselves after the holy city and lean on the God of Israel. The Lord of hosts is his name. They talked God talk, but they didn't live for God. Verse 3, I have declared the former things from the beginning. They went forth from my mouth, and I caused them to hear it. Suddenly, I did them, and they came to pass. When God says he will do something, his words will come to pass. When the time is right, he will do what he said he will do. There's just no doubt about it because nobody can stop him. For because I knew that you were obstinate and your neck was an iron sinew and your brow bronze, a metal neck will not bend. And God's people were, well, they were unbendable too. That's why God called them, you know, a, a neck that is made out of iron. They were unbendable. God's people were set in their ungodly ways, and no one could get them to change either. Verse 5, even from the beginning, I have declared it to you. Before it came to pass, I proclaimed it to you. Lest you should say, my idol has done them and my carved image and my molten image have commanded them. Many of God's people believed that idols controlled what happened. Consequently, God told his people the future so that they would wake up and realize that God is the one who's in control. Verse 6, you have heard, see all this, and will you not declare it? I have made you hear new things from this time, even hidden things, and you did not know them. God says, you heard what I said, and then you saw it come to pass. Now, God says, I'm going to tell you more things about the future. 7. They are created now, and not from the beginning. And before this day you have not heard them, lest you should say, of course, I knew them. God can announce the future because God arranges everything that will happen. He's in control. <clears throat> Verse 8, Surely you did not hear. Surely you did not know. Surely from long ago your ear was not opened. For I knew that you would deal very treacherously and were called a transgressor from the womb. God tells his people, you have never listened to me, so I could never count on you. Verse 9, for my name's sake, I will defer my anger, and for my praise, I will restrain it from you, so that I do not cut you off. They deserve to be wiped out, but God is saying that he will be patient. Verse 10, behold, I have refined you but not as silver. I have tested you in the furnace of affliction. 
to remove any impurities from silver, you have to heat it up. And in order to get his people to repent of their impurities, God put them through the fire of hard times. That's how it works today, too. 11. For my own sake, for my own sake, I will do it. For how should my name be profaned? And I will not give my glory to another. The only reason God will not destroy his people is because then the heathen would say Israel's God couldn't protect them. Verse 12, listen to me, O Jacob, and Israel, my called. I am he, I am the first, I am also the last. God was there before anything came to be. God is the first cause of all things. And no matter who doesn't like it, he will be there on the last day as well. He is the first, he is the last. Verse 13, Indeed, my hand has laid the foundation of the earth, and my right hand has stretched out the heavens. When I call to them, they stand up together. God created the world by speaking it into being. He created it, and he controls it. What God tells the world to do, it does. 14. All of you, assemble yourselves and hear. Who among them has declared these things? The Lord loves him. He shall do his pleasure on Babylon, and his arm shall be against the Chaldeans. I, even I, have spoken. Yes, I have called him, I have brought him, and his way will prosper. Cyrus will one day attack Babylon. God says he will do what I want him to do and he will succeed. You know, when God calls someone to do something, he helps them to do it. 16. Come near to me. Hear this. I have not spoken in secret from the beginning. From the time that it was, I was there. And now the Lord God and his Spirit have sent me. God says, God says, I use plain talk. I told you what would happen, and it happened. Then Isaiah says, And now God is going to say more things to you through me. 17. Thus says the Lord, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, I am the Lord your God, who teaches you to profit, who leads you by the way you should go. God wants to help his people. And his help is all the help they need. However, people still must accept the help of God by obeying him and letting him lead. And oftentimes, that doesn't the case. See, he is all that we need, but we have to accept it by obeying him. 18. Oh, that you had healed, or all oh, that you had heeded my commandments. Then your peace would have been like a river, and your righteousness like the waves of the sea. Your descendants also would have been like the sand, and the offspring of your body like the grains of sand. His name would not have been cut off nor destroyed from before me. God does not want us to obey him, because he has to be bossy to feel good about himself or something like that. He wants us to do right. Because he wants us to be happy. And by the way, this verse teaches that God knows all the good that would have been if we had not disobeyed him whenever we have disobeyed him. 20. Go forth from Babylon, flee from the Chaldeans with a voice of singing, declare, proclaim this, utter it even to the end of the earth. Say, the Lord has redeemed his servant Jacob. God is looking ahead into time to when he will rescue his people from their enemies who will capture them. See, God, God sees the end from the beginning. He sees, he sees the punishment of his people, but he also sees beyond the punishment to the restoration. 21. 
and they did not thirst. When he led them through the deserts, he caused the waters to flow from the rock for them. He also split the rock, and the waters gushed out. And so his people will believe him for the future good he promises. His people will believe him for the future good he promises. God reminds them of his goodness toward them in the past. Because he wants them, he wants his people to believe him for the future good that he promises. And he reminds them of his faithfulness towards them in the past. And then they can grab a hold of that future that God promises. <clears throat> Verse 22, There is no peace, says the Lord, for the wicked. God makes many wonderful promises in his word. But none of those promises are for people who, re who refuse to give up their wickedness. Those promises are for the obedient. Next time, chapter 49. Until then, Michael Merritt for Scripture Verse by Verse. So long, everyone.